Uh, I'm Andrew. Um, if you want to find out more about me after this talk, uh, probably the best way is on Twitter. That's my handle. I'll show it at the end too. Uh, and what I'm going to be talking about today is a web application uh, called Bitsy Game Maker. Uh, and I don't have any slides here at all. Uh, the tone of this talk is going to be chill. So if you, I'm going to be making a game from zero to publishable game, hopefully in the next half hour to keep track of time so I don't get lost here. So if you have questions, uh, let's just, just raise your hand in the middle and I can address it as we go. But uh, what is Bitsy? So Bitsy is a web application made by Adam Ledoux uh, and its function is for building very small uh, web games. Um, essentially, you use the, the web app entirely to output at the end an HTML file that contains the entirety of your game and then can be uploaded to services like uh, itch.io is kind of its main target. But it's very portable. You can put it wherever you want. You can host it on your web, own website, etc. cetera. Um, Bitsy games now, they run on phones and other touch-enabled devices. Um, so they're very, they're very, very, very portable in ways that I don't think a lot of applications are. And in general, Bitsy is made to be a zero friction uh, sort of system where if you know nothing about coding or video games, you still can in very little time uh, sit down with Bitsy and make an actual playable game. I think the first one I did took me about eight hours and that was because it was a little more complicated than it could be. That may sound like a lot, but I think that's very, very, very low time commitment for this kind of uh, programming. So uh, I'm just going to make a game here right now. So to start, uh, I'm actually going to need some audience input, I think, just to get going here. Um, what should my game be about? Just shout out cats. Cats, OK, sure, popular <laughs> one. OK, uh, so all right, we'll go with that. Uh, we're going to make a game about cats, and we'll figure out more as we go. Uh, so, Bitsy, the main components are we have rooms and then we have drawings. And drawings are things that are placed on rooms. They're sorted into tiles, sprites, and items, which just determines their behavior. So basically, a Bitsy game is a series of rooms that you can move your avatar throughout. So I probably should explain what I'm doing there. Uh, so this is what our room looks like, our first room here. This is just the default room that when you load up Bitsy, uh, that's what you'll find. Also, if you want to play with Bitsy, the thing you're going to be searching for is Bitsy Game Maker. Searching Bitsy by itself, it's not a great SEO term, so you might come up with different things. So this is our main room. I press play. I'm going to go into preview mode. Uh, and at that point, I can move our little avatar around and interact with other drawings. Uh, tiles are non-interactable. They either are walls or not walls. We'll call them walls or floor. And then sprites are drawings that are both walls and create a dialogue when you interact with them. The uh, other item type is an item. Uh, the other drawing type is an item. And drawing are drawings that will be removed and create a dialogue when you interact with them. Uh, all sounds pretty straightforward. But what you can do here is you can pretty quickly assemble uh, narrative games. Um, Bitsy is not good for making any kind of game. It's not good for making puzzle games or action games or platformers. But it is very good at making games where you want to tell a story and you want to tell it as quickly as possible, putting as few obstacles between you and the actual end goal of creating a narrative for other people to experience. And because of that, it has a, a, lot, of, a lot of users. Um, I don't want to get too much into it because I want to start making this game here in a second. But recently, the number of games published with Bitsy uh, outpaced the number of games published with Unreal Engine, uh, which is like the second biggest like commercial game engine right now. And that's just because lots of people are making games and Bitsy games are easy and fast to make. So lots of people are making lots of Bitsy games. Um, all right, let's get back to our game. So we're making a game about cats. So we've already got this cat sprite, the default I'm a cat sprite. Um, actually, you know what? Let's make our avatar a cat. So let's start. Right, we're, gonna, we're editing a drawing here. and We're editing the main drawing, our avatar drawing. And we're going to make him her, them, a cat. They're just going to have one ear. 
uh, and or maybe they're looking that way. It's hard to say. Yeah, uh, so Bitsy by default, all the drawings are eight by eight. Uh, and they're very, so it's very limited. It's intentionally limiting, uh, I think, to be a removal of distractions and also just because I think the creator likes that aesthetic. Um, so what I just did there is I just changed our little avatar to a cat. Let's even, let's give it a little juice here and make it like a, give it some, yeah, there we go. So what are you doing there? So what I'm doing here is I'm editing the second frame of the drawing. So I created, I, I toggled the animation and I made a second frame so that now our cat looks like it's kind of roving or skipping along the screen. Um, and that's, that's pretty much how easy it is to uh, kind of create drawings and graphics in Bitsy. Uh, I've got the paint tool here, and then I'm going to, all the windows you can toggle up top. I'm gonna try not to go too far into like the technical details of like how I'm uh, editing things, so much as the broad strokes, and then you can explore on your own. So we've got uh, one tile, and then I could, I could edit this tile uh, so, and you see it makes changes to all the other tiles on the screen. That's the basic idea there. Uh, create drawings and then place drawings somewhere in your rooms uh, to have your users interact with. All right, so let's call our game something. We're gonna call it Cool Cat Game. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, and now, all right, so now we have to have some sort of narrative. I guess this is the part that I didn't think too far in advance. Uh, so we'll just say that this cat, this cat's named Buster, that's us now, uh, and he, Buster has to talk to all of his other cat friends. So what I'm doing right now is I'm editing this first sprite. It's the, just the default cat sprite, we'll call it friend one. And I'm telling it to talk to us and I'm changing its dialogue. So what that does, all right, so again, we, all right, let me go over. I change the title, I changed what our sprite looks like, our avatar, and I changed the dialogue of one of the uh, sprites in the game. Um, again, it seems pretty simple stuff, but these are like the foundational building blocks that you can start doing a lot of more complicated stuff too. Uh, for example, let's give us a reason to go somewhere else. Okay, so friend one, who is now called Doug, uh, gives you some direction to go talk to someone else. Uh, and we'll say that that someone else, Mabel, is in a different room. Uh, so we're going to, uh, oh, that's why I'm in preview mode. Uh, this little window here allows you to both edit your rooms and preview your game. Uh, by pressing play, you're actually running the game just as the user would. Sometimes it gets a little confusing whether or not you're editing or running, uh, which is what just happened to me there. But now I'm back to editing it, and we're just gonna make a little doorway to a new room. Uh, so down at the bottom here, we'll call this start room. And I'm gonna make another one. Uh, and this is the same thing. So each room is basically a 16 by 16 uh, grid of data that tells Bitsy what are all the drawings in what room. And they can be connected via exits. So an exit uh, just allows you to move your avatar from room, one room to another. So what I'm doing is I open up the exit window, I place the exit here, and then I'm gonna say that that exit goes to here in what is called room one, I guess, which we probably should call it something else, like west room, okay. So, and then just to be, just so we don't have to redo steps, I'm gonna make a new exit in West Room, and that's gonna put you out here, back in the Start Room. So, 
Now, if our user starts, we've got cool cat game. We can talk to Doug, who maybe we should make it clear that his name is Doug. Uh, he says, hello, oh, well, we didn't change his dialogue. Either way, you can now exit to a different room where we can put other content. Can you have logic in there where Doug says something different every time? That's a great question. <laughs> <clears throat> let's see if we can do that. So let's go. First of all, oh, and why did some of our changes not get saved? Because we were in preview mode. Like a lot of things, it's hard to edit the data while you are actively using it. Uh, so sometimes, that's one of the reasons why you want to be careful whether you know you're in preview mode because you won't save stuff. So we'll change it. We'll first of all let everyone know that this is Doug. Then we'll give Doug some sort of generic quest. The core of all narratives, um, question mark. Uh, all right, so that's, that's the basic dialogue, just that little window there that just is like output text when you find this right. Um, but as I was asked, like, what else can you do in there? Well, there's this whole dialogue window that lets you start putting in different sorts of conditionals and logic for dialogue. And that's where I think Bitsy starts getting into coding optional. Because uh, everything we've covered so far, basically I've shown you 85% uh, of what you'd need to make a game with Bitsy. Like if you just did these drawings, if you made, you know, sort of go from one person to the next and they tell you things, and eventually you just need to put an ending and then that's a game. Technically they don't even need an ending. As long as people are already uh, interacting, et cetera, that can be a game. But what we usually consider games, there needs to be some sort of challenge. So in order there to be challenged, there needs to be things that the user can change, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that's where you can start coding different stuff in Bitsy. Sorry if I'm kind of rambling here. That's part of the downsides of live talk. All right, so let's start with one of the things that we can do is we can uh, do lists. And lists are a series of bits of dialogue that are displayed in different ways. So this first one is a sequence. And a sequence tracks every time you've uh, interacted with a sprite and then changes the dialogue based on that. So I'm going to add a couple more lines. And we're just going to make it very clear <laughs> that there's no more dialogue for the user to experience. So again, so this is just a little sequence here. We're going to test it. And we're going to say it's the first time. Hello, Buster. Maybe you should go find Mabel. Let me experience again. Hello, Buster. Note that the first dialogue stays the same. And then from there, it starts using our list, which is kind of conditionally triggered. <laughs> He's very polite about it, I guess. Uh, so it has this little GUI for modifying uh, dialogue, and I'll get you pretty far. Uh, you can add some other stuff, which I think we'll get into a little bit. Like you can add a conditional. Uh, things you can check for in conditionals, you can set your own variables. You can also check for items that have been picked up. Um, and then you can, also, you can also do some text effects. Oh, OK, yeah, that's a good thing to show off. Let's make, oh, first of all, let's make sure we're not in preview mode so that our changes are actually saved. And let's show that Mabel is very important and you should care about that word in particular. Oh, actually, I should show you another thing. Um, also, you can preview the dialogue itself with this button as opposed to having to preview the whole game. Uh, it just previews that section of the dialogue. So in this case, we've just added a rainbow tag to that word. Uh, to emphasize it. There's a couple other tags. I probably won't get into all of them, but they just kind of add a little more expressiveness to your dialogue. Um, and you can see as we're previewing it, it is going through each item of the list as if we were visiting them each time. Do you have multiple text effects at a time? Uh, yeah, they do nest. Um, in fact, that probably brings me to another little bit which this is actually how the scripting language is stored in the game. Uh, it doesn't, Bitsy has its own limited scripting language. It is not JavaScript by any means. 
Uh, and it's also kind of written by one guy and added too slowly. So sometimes you're like, that's not what I thought that should do. Uh, but it still gives you a lot of options. You'll see that it uses curly brackets to indicate uh, code blocks that it has to operate on. So in this case, you've got just some raw dialog, which it assumes that's the default, so it has no code indicating that. And then the curly bracket starts a list, which is a sequence type list. And then after that, it does use uh, return characters and spaces as uh, they're, not, they're non ignored characters. Uh, so these dashes are defining the list that we're going to run through here. And then the text effects are emphasized by these other little RBW curly box. If this is too far for you already, don't feel bad. That's not, you don't have to ever get into this to make Bitsy games, but it is there, meaning that Bitsy has, you can get in immediately and just start fiddling around. And then if you want to make more complicated things, uh, you can do a lot of stuff with this. Uh, I don't have this prepared for this talk, but I've done stuff like I've made a slot machine in here. I made some pretty complex quest conditions. You can have very detailed branching dialogue where you're triggering different variables inside nested code blocks to create this like, well, they'll say your name. And then if you've seen this, they'll say this. And you can kind of create, you can go as far as you want to is essentially what I'm saying. Um, so, all right, back to our game right now. We have, oh, what happened there? Right now, we just have our avatar. We have a character that tells us to do something. We have somewhere to go, and then nothing to do in there. So I think to start, we'll just add Mabel to the game since we told you to go find her. That seems to make the most sense to me. So what I did is I made a new sprite. Uh, I did that just by hitting the plus button here. Um, and it seems to be a best as a sprite because if you're going to talk to them, I don't know, uh, you could do it however you wanted to, but a sprite has that kind of default interaction of stops the player and forces a dialogue, which I think is what players will expect to have happen. So, oh, I'm going to put Mabel here, and then we'll give her some more dialogue, we'll say. All right, how are we doing on time? We're about halfway through. So, all right. Probably the last thing I didn't cover as far as actual game components are endings. A lot of people don't actually use endings in their Bitsy game. It's kind of a, it's not necessary, I guess, is the best way to put it. So we'll make a new ending, though. And endings work a lot like exits, only instead of taking a player to a new room, uh, they just display dialogue in kind of a fancier way or, or a more important way, I guess. Thanks for playing. We'll, we'll show you what that does in just a second. And I'm going to. Sometimes it can be hard to edit tiles underneath things you've already placed, so you have to close out that window in order to see what we're doing. Oh, and I closed it on the wrong part. OK. So now we almost have a game here. We at least have someone that tells you something. And then we have a thing you can do in response to them. And then here we have our ending, that after the ending, it starts the game back over. Uh, so, da, da, da. there we go. <laughs> Good job, everyone. <clears throat> um, that, is, that is basically, that is about all of the core components. And we'll see how much I have to get into how you can remix those into uh, more, more meaningful interaction for players. Uh, in a second, I want to show you actually what you do with this game once you've built it and how you can share it, because I think that's just as important. Uh, but I guess I'll go over one other thing. A lot of people are attracted to the limited nature of Bitsy's art palette, I guess. I'm kind of rambling a little bit here. But I'm going to make a new palette to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So we've got this basic palette that just determines what colors we're using. 
we're going to make a new one and we're going to make it a little sassier. So let's go with some purples and it's going to be really bright. Yeah. Okay, and we'll call this sassy. Good. And it's very simple, but what that allows you to do uh, is to map different colors to different tiles. It's very kind of basic video game stuff, but it gives you a lot of expressiveness in terms of how you can change the mood of like very simple things. It just, it, by default, it just has three colors, which is to say there's always a background color, there's always a color for tiles, and then everything else is like this like highlight color, which in this case we have teal there. Um, and there's a lot of different things you could do if I wanted to make this kind of, I'm not going to go too much into color theory here, but if I wanted to make this like a kind of dark moody scene, we could go with more of a sepia tone effect. Um, and you can find a lot of uh, different uses for the same tiles if you're experimenting with how color affects what you're trying to express. Yes? Uh, by default, no, um, but that is, that is a good question that I will get into as soon as I'm done showing you what you do, what you would do right now if you wanted to publish. So let's say that this is, we're good with this game. This is fine. We're, this is our masterpiece. At this point, what we would do is we go to the download window and it's got two buttons here. Uh, the import is stuck in the download, uh, window if you're ever confused about how you import your game. But we would hit download and that would uh, give us a HTML file, which I just opened up in Chrome, uh, called coolcatgame.html, which is the title of our game. And at this point, uh, this acts just like the preview window does. Um, and also, if we were to open it on a touch-enabled device, all of the mouse controls uh, would be mapped to swiping on the screen. I think it takes the whole screen as an input area now. Uh, and then we can go, um, sites like, I guess I'd have to sign into my itch.io account, but sites like itch.io um, are designed to accept those files, just an all-encompassing HTML file, as like an uploadable. So now if I, let's search for someone else's Bitsy game here. Here we go. Oh, that's a demo. go to one of my friend's games. So this is just one of these HTML files that has been uploaded to the browser and is uploaded to itch.io and is failing to load now for reasons I don't totally understand. I think our Wi-Fi is kind of... All right, so all I was trying to show is that from the download button, you're going to get an HTML file you can upload that HTML file to whatever hosting service you have. Uh, and certain hosting services are exactly designed for these kind of small games and allow you to cultivate an audience. Itch.io actually has some really amazing analytics uh, to let you kind of see who's visiting, who's clicking, that kind of stuff. It's very helpful. A uh, question earlier was, OK, what if I want to go beyond this? What if I want to add sound was specifically the question. Uh, but there's all kinds of things where you're like, OK, that's nice, but I'd really like to do this. And the answer is, uh, probably you can. Uh, because <laughs> uh, as you would imagine, if you know anything about uh, front end, it's all written in JavaScript. And it's actually a vanilla JavaScript. If you're looking for uh, clean modular code, Bitsy is not the right environment for you. Um, but that means that lots of people have created uh, tools and extenders and different sorts of uh, add-ons that you can use for Bitsy, um, which is, I think, I think a, is a big strength of it. Let's look up some Bitsy hacks. So this is a GitHub repo that I use a lot that is all of curated hack extensions to Bitsy. They're all made in little... Uh, Enveloped at JavaScript, so they're made to be added to the end of the file, and then they will modify the file however they see fit to add this functionality. Um, the idea behind there being that they are intended to work for people who don't necessarily know how to use JavaScript. If you can know enough to edit a text file 
and add this at the end, you know enough how to use these and learning how to use them right or modify what they're doing, then you can start learning JavaScript to do so. Uh, and there's also a lot of applications. Well, one of these, I guess I should not forget uh, what I came here for. One of these is called Bitsy Muse, and that's all for adding sound files uh, to your game. It lets you add, uh, it lets you link music files, MP3s, waves, whatever, as background for your scenes, and then change them as you go room to room, all by setting kind of a uh, JavaScript options file that it then modifies. There's other ones in here that are very handy. Um, one thing that Bitsy can't do by itself is it can't do a locked door with a key right now. There's no way to create a conditional that modifies the actual game environment in vanilla Bitsy. So there are definitely hacks that allow you to do that. Um, and there's kind of a whole ecosystem of little uh, addendums that you can use for Bitsy, one of which I happen to run. Um, which I will just show off. I designed this tool to make it easier. Because I see Bitsy as having its core strength as being open to anyone, uh, I wanted to make it so that extended functionality was also easier to access. So the idea behind Borksy is that you can add your game data here and then select what hacks from a pre-listed, uh, from a pre-selected menu of hacks you can add to your game making that as easy as possible. And I know I've got picked up quite a few users uh, because of that ease. I guess something I didn't mention here is something that is available to you in Bitsy, and there are reasons why you would fiddle with this, is the game data. And this here, this window, represents the entirety of your game uh, stored in text form. They, they get pretty big after a while. In the HTML file that is output at the end, like this is just stored as a massive, uh, it's not actually a string, it's just a script with this text file in there that Bitsy knows uh, to read separately from other JavaScript. And then all of this is parsed into uh, the game engine when Bitsy loads your page. And that means that you do have the fine grain ability to go in and edit your game data like in its raw format, which when you're starting, you probably don't want to do, but eventually, you know, if, you've, if there's weird bugs that start happening, uh, there's also quite a few cheats that you can do that is not quite hacking Bitsy, but is also kind of like jamming stuff into the data that Bitsy wouldn't allow you to add otherwise. Um, which is to say, it's just another way that Bitsy allows you to come in at like a zero level, but then you can get your hands in there and get as dirty as you want to. Um, I think I'm pretty much up on time there. And I think I ran through most of what I wanted to cover. I didn't cover some of the grand whys and why no entry games is important. Are there questions that I didn't get to or that people have from seeing this in the front? The site itself, you make your characters look like your NPCs. From the, what do you mean you say sign itself? Ah, so could you like make the sprites move? Yeah. Not by default. By default, sprites are kind of like static objects that you interact with. Um, but again, that's some of the sort of uh, hacking stuff that definitely people uh, have found other reasons why they want to do that. And if you get to, especially if you're comfortable with like trying to write a line or two of JavaScript, you can definitely start to do things like that. It's extended functionality, but it's there and it's possible. Uh, Skylar? Save functions? No, right now there's not any built-in save function. I don't think there's a hack at the moment that just implements save functions from the get-go, but I know that there's a lot of interest in that, and that's kind of a, a barrier to create like longer form Bitsy games. So I think that in the next year or so, we're going to see some work put into that. It's definitely on my list. It's just long on the bottom of my to-do list. So. Yes and no. Uh, there, let's see. If you go to, if you look up Borksy, one of the things that I have tried to collect is a listing of all the other tools that Borksy, and someone has created an image to Bitsy 
uh, application that lets you take a static image and then convert it into a Bitsy room. That's the only way right now that you can import other things, basically by creating a static image and then importing a static image into another game. There's not a lot of like sharing. You can, once you've saved your file, you can uh, upload your file to Bitsy to edit again. Like you don't have to just do everything in that window and then close it out. But there's not ways to like merge or like import assets or things like that at the moment. All right, well that was kind of rambling, but uh, that is Bitsy and that's what I've been looking into lately. So thanks for your patience everyone. <laughs>